so types of corporate facilities. Um, so you have your amortizing loan facilities, uh, usually provided by banks. So there's some nuances uh, in these facilities that we're going to run through. Some are provided by banks. Uh, some will be provided by streaming royalty companies. Um, and uh, those are kind of competing with the banks at this stage as they're beginning to become more and more mainstream. But uh, your amorts, it's just, uh, as you see, it's just a contractual payment profile that reduces the debt sequentially over a period of time. And um, repayments should be sculpted to match the cash flow profile of the company. Um, and that's typically what you'd see in a company that's uh, using the amortizing loan facility uh, for expansion, to fund an expansion. Um, they would begin to pay down the amort as their cash flow uh, generation capacity increases. And what you want to do is you want to sculpt the amort to their cash flow generation. So often used to fund expansion projects. You then get revolving credit facilities, uh, also usually provided by banks. And these can be paid down and redrawn up until maturity. And uh, medium term funding for mines in steady state. Typical tenor, three to five years. Okay, We will touch on this later on in the session. Um, just how, um, generally speaking, um, there's a concept, uh, okay, let me not preempt it, but it's cheaper to fund an amort because of, um, there's, a, there's a concept in finance called duration, and your duration is just a weighted average of, so you take the time until you receive a cash flow, and you weight it with a present value of that cash flow, and then you divide that result with the present value of all the cash flows. So it's just a weighted average of the time taken to get your money back. So for an RCF, you I don't know if um, th there was a lot of debate when I was still at the bank to make it a little bit more sophisticated, but in, in my early years at the bank, they'd when they're calculating the uh, capital costs to the bank for an RCF, they would assume a worst case scenario that the thing is fully drawn up until year five, and then year five, you pay it back. So the duration, or how long it takes you to get your money back, is five years for a fully drawn RCF. If you take the weighted average, there's only going to be one cash flow, and it happens at year five. So cash flow amount multiplied by five, divided by cash flow amount, two cancels out, your duration is five. So if you look at an amortizing facility, let's say you're getting an installment every year, just for simplicity. So you say one year multiplied by the installment amount or if year one times by two times by, uh, sorry, plus two, which is year two times by the installment of year two plus three, which is year three times by the installment of year three, et cetera, et cetera. So you're just taking a weighted average and then you divide that by the total amount of the present value of all the installments. Maybe uh, a three, uh, a five year amount gives you a duration of three and a half years. So it's lower capital charges. It's just something else for you to remember when you are also doing your cost benefit analysis, because a client will say, we want a five year RCF and we want it at this pricing. And then you'd be able to justify to the client using that duration argument. Um, but we'll see that a bit later. So that's contingency funding for strikes and production interruptions. Okay. And um, unfortunately it's a, it's a catch 22 with RCFs because you don't want the client to draw on the RCF because they'll only draw on the RCF when they need the money. Um, and some companies actually use them for acquisitions and uh, they can get around getting lender approval for those acquisitions. I know use the RCF for uh, putting a, a significant chunk into their acquisitions. And um, I mean, they, they got away with it. There were some materiality thresholds. Again, when you're looking at covenants, um, what are you trying to achieve? So the first time they did it, then the lenders negotiated a provision in there that uh, would be a catch-all if the certain value of the acquisition was above a certain threshold. Because you don't want them to take on more than they can chew. Use your RCF to do it so they don't need lender approval. Um, they just draw on their RCF and then... Um, yeah, after that, it's out of your hands. You know, it's already baked, done. 
Um, so whether they're doing it like uh, using the ICF for acquisitions or using the ICF for strikes, you know, they're going to draw on the RCF when they're at their weakest point. So this is the hesitancy around revolving credit facilities. And this is why the corporates or the clients like them so much.